Get as far away as he can from Blue and her friends because she could be skidooing to a place near you. And I can't believe MacPat made a whole theory about Blue's Clues. Gosh, maybe if I could somehow collab with him someday, we could do another one. I already have a theory that'd be perfect. I mean, who knows? This could really happen. This could be my creator destiny. On March 9th, I will be hosting my last theory episode, at which point I'll be handing off the channels to someone else. Welp. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Clue Theory, the completely unofficial one-off spin-off that's kinda like film theory except exclusively about Blue's Clues, and I'm not MatPath. Huh, that sounded oddly familiar. Have I said that before? At the end of the day, though, it's just a theory. A Blue's Clues theory. And I'm... I'm not MatPath. Ah, yeah, well, wouldn't be my first go at imitating MatPat then, but in fairness, how can I resist? I've been a fan of the theorist channels for years now, with a special place in my heart for film theory. Those who know my previous Blue's Clues videos will know that I'm quite the nitpicky analytical theorizing rambler. I mean, heck, if I weren't, I wouldn't be making a video like this. My point is, the theorist channels have always provided the absolute best content for anyone who likes digging past the surface levels of media and exploring what may be going on behind what we typically see. Over time, MadPat's tackled so much media that I love, and would you look at that, he's even gone and done Blue's Clues. The moment this episode dropped, I started dreaming up a Blue's Clues theory of my own that, as my intro skit implied, I did hope that I could magically get to dive into with Matt someday. But with his retirement and the new era of theorist hosts already underway, it looks like I'll just have to do it myself. But hey, now I can use this video as an opportunity to show my love for all he's done. After all, imitation is the highest form of flattery. By the way, imitation aside, I should probably mention to those new to this channel and me, I'm TechReal, a small content creator with quite a large knowledge and overall hyperfixation towards Blue's Clues and Blue's Clues and you. I've been making fan content as well as watching and re-watching and studying this franchise for quite some time now, which is why I feel pretty decently qualified to make a film theory-esque video on it. But alright, we've got a long convoluted theory ahead, so enough preamble and on with the homage! Oh, you like that word? It's French. It means cheese. I think you mean fromage. Rosa tape. It's fromage. The question I'd like to propose today is one that I've been wondering ever since I was just a little tech reel. Where are Steve's parents? Or, well, Steve and Joe's parents specifically, as they are brothers. Just use Steve in the title, because I know a lot of people in this fandom kind of have a whole thing about Joe. I mean, I think he's great. But anyways, besides the point, where are the parents? According to photos in home movies from the episodes Blue's First Holiday and Sage and Ginger's Baby Book, the only adult figures ever seen in the house are Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper. There don't seem to be any human guardians in sight, whether it's for smaller moments like Blue's First Bath, or bigger events like birthdays or generic winter holiday, you know, before they stopped tiptoeing around Christmas and just did Christmas. In fact, not only are they never seen, they're also never mentioned. Not a single time in one special, two movies, and 226 episodes at the time of recording this video do Steve and Joe even once talk about a mom or dad. Now, this isn't to say they have no human family. After all, we know they have their cousin Josh, who also has a section of human family members himself, so we do have the makings of a human family tree. If we could just find a steady connection to their parents, then maybe we could learn more. Hmm. A clue! A clue! Alright, I know I'm struggling here, but there's no need to boo. Oh, a clue! Ooh, and how interesting a clue indeed, as despite her only appearing in a single episode, in Blue's Big Treasure Hunt, we're introduced to Steve and Joe's grandma. With just about a minute and a half of screen time and a small handful of background drawings across various future episodes, you'd think that she can't possibly be that important. But throughout her short appearance, she shows some potential signs of knowing a bit more than she lets on. Like this key, for example. At the end of the episode, she gives Blue this key as a present. A key to unlock all your favorite. A key to unlock unspecified treasures. Well, that's weirdly ambiguous. Especially compared to Steve's gift of banana cookies. He gets a treat while she gets to wear a random key on her wrist? Doesn't seem completely fair. Although one has to wonder, could there be more to this seemingly simple gift? Could it have more relevance to Blue than we initially realize? Well, conveniently enough, three seasons later, a key is suddenly very important in Blue's life. A key given to her by the Moon Fairy Muna, one that unlocks her greatest gift of being able to talk to her friends in puppet form. Late season Blue's Clues gets to some weird places, man. Oh yeah, Matt, it really does. Anyways, this clearly isn't the same key that Grandma gave her. Different design, and the real special key was again given to her after she was 
born with it. Uh, I'm sorry, born with it? Do, do I have that right? She was born with a little golden key. How does one birth a key? Okay, whatever, the point is, Grandma's key isn't the key. But maybe the gift was just meant to give a little wink at what's coming for Blue. Maybe she knew what Blue would eventually discover and wanted to point her towards it. Not convinced yet? Well, let's take a look earlier in her debut episode at another strange piece of knowledge she has. As the treasure hunt she set up for Steve leads us behind a bookcase and to... Oh look, our second clue! A door leading to a magical world known as the Land of Great Discovery. Listen, I know we just said that late Blue's Clues gets weird, but here we are in Season 3, sliding down a rainbow into a hidden world connecting various previous Skidoo locations. See, look, there's the world of Candy, there's Storybook Forest, we got Recycle Town. But the real interesting bit here is when Steve and Blue find these trees and bushes that seem to be growing things related to them and their friends. A mail tree for mailbox, number bush for tickety, and then these trees providing outfits for Steve and Blue. Did Grandma put these here for them? I mean, she led them there, there's even a dress in the tree for her, and she knew about this world in their house when apparently nobody else did. I mean, if it wasn't her, then why do those trees and bushes have things so specifically related to the people of this house? But then again, this wouldn't be the only strange connection to these characters that even their normal world has to offer. Like, have you really ever stopped to consider, why is Blue's face on the currency of this world? Blue dollars, blue coins, I mean, really, why her? She's not famous, despite being a magical dog that jumped out of a book. She's just a puppy in a house leaving clues, and she's not even the only one that can do that. Could it be the popularity of the book she came from? Maybe? I mean, in the world of a preschool show, the idea of literary characters being the faces on money is a pretty cool detail, but why would Blue be the character of choice? You'd think they'd go with someone of bigger storybook relevance, like Cinderella, or Little Red Riding Hood, Humpty Dumpty, Goldilocks, or someone else like that. You can't help but start to wonder, between the custom trees and the custom currency, was this world made and tailored to these characters specifically? Could be. And with Grandma's knowledge and apparent ability to foreshadow, maybe it was her who made it. But to even attempt to claim that, we'd have to be able to prove that any random person in this world can create worlds of their own, and that's just crazy, right? Well. No. In fact, it's genuinely canon according to previous episodes, and honestly something that's almost entirely too easy to prove. In the Season 3 episode Words, Stephen Blue Skidoo into a blank piece of paper. Riveting, I know. But with just a handy bag of words, they managed to create all sorts of things. A wagon, a road, a sky, a, a lion! Within seconds, they've taken a simple barren white void and turned it into a brand new environment with a living creature. Just two episodes before this, in Blue's play, Blue makes a collage based on the characters and plot of a play they're all writing. And when they skidoo in, they find the characters they've created have been brought to life, acting identical to what they've written for them in the episode so far. And then, three seasons later in Skidoo Adventure, a similar thing happens when Joe and Blue create a big pretend world in their living room called Wacky Wild World. A fully custom creation that, again, once they skidoo into it, becomes a real functioning world. This one even comes with characters that they didn't create themselves, like this balloon fairy, a clay blob, these little cup guys, all showing that not only can you create a custom world of your own, but it can also evolve and expand past its original intentions. <laughs> the people of this world can literally play God whenever they want. Huh. Comparing a show to religion. I really have embraced my role as pseudo map hat for the day. Okay, so we've managed to prove that custom worlds can be made and lived in, and with fairly little effort, as you can really start with something as small and simple as a piece of paper. So now the question is, is the world of the show not the real one? Is it just a created world within another? And again, the answer is a very provable yes. Also, I should probably say, if you're looking at the time of this video and thinking, hey, wasn't this about parents at some point? It is. I swear we're getting to it. Once I prove this last thing, we'll be on track to where I think the parents are, so just stay with me. To start off, there's clearly a style difference between characters like Steve and Joe versus characters like Blue, Sidetable, Periwinkle, and all the other animated characters of this world. Steve and Joe, and quite a few others, are live action. More importantly, the child friends setting letters at mail time are also live action, and they're in fully live action locations, meaning that there is a fully live action world connected to this one in some way. In fact, we've seen characters from this world jump over there a few times now. For instance, the VHS of Blue's birthday opens with some kids watching the show when Steve skidoos over to get help with the birthday dance for Blue. And sure, you might think this is just some meta moment breaking the fourth wall for non-canon fun. But in the episode Geography, Steve says this. How did you get here today? By car? By boat? By television? Cool.
Yes, you heard correctly. Steve knows that we're visiting via television. This is a canon fact in this universe. Meaning that Steve skidooing over to his live-action friends in their live-action world through TV can actually have happened within the logic of this world. Side note, if we're canonically visiting via television, then what must they all be seeing from their end? Do you think it's like the screen bots in Wreck-It Ralph? You know, the, uh, anyways. In the way of live-action locations, we also have things like the Summer with Joe commercials, Blue skidooing into a letter during a game of Joe's Clues, and a couple instances of Magenta sending her regards from live-action locations as well. And then of course we have our biggest example, Blue's Big City Adventure, where Josh, Blue, and others spend the day in the fully live-action and real New York City. And listen here to what Josh says. You came to New York City from... Storybook World. Storybook World. Right. Storybook World. Josh refers to the world he lives in as Storybook World. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe the world that they're living in was originally created in the form of a book. But we need the proof. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll find it in an episode. Here, I'll throw it on. Oh, wait, would you look at that? Our third clue and also the proof we need. Yes, we don't even need to watch an episode to prove they live in a book. Everything we need is all in the intros. The thing is, every intro from the original series shows us skidooing from a live action location into a book to get to the world of the show. The two versions from Joe showing Blue skidooing into the book, and while Steve's just has the camera zooming into it, if you listen closely, you can actually hear the skidoo sound effect mixed in with the opening music. Blue skidoo, we can too. It's literally been staring us in the face the entire time at the beginning of every episode. Alright, we've strayed pretty far from our original question. But along the way, we've picked up some pretty helpful clues that should help us answer it. So, let's take a seat here in the thinking chair and get thinking. So we're trying to figure out where Steve and Joe's parents are, and our clues are their grandma, her foreshadowing and knowledge of things like the key and the land of great discovery, and the fact that this world was created as a book in a live-action world. Well, I think I have an idea of how this could all come together. It's a bit out there, but here's what I'm thinking. So Steve and Joe never talk about their parents, and maybe there's a good reason for that. Maybe their parents weren't ideal, weren't good at being good parents, and generally made them unhappy, and Grandma took notice of this fact. She obviously doesn't want her sweet, innocent grandkids to suffer, but she doesn't know how to get their parents to change. What she does know, however, is a little magic, how to skidoo, and how to make worlds to skidoo into. So one day, she gets a little yellow book and creates a special world with a house full of friends and two small yet capable parents that can take care of these boys. And a few fun hidden secrets around the house that they could eventually find. Hi, oh, you're welcome. I know how you love finding babies. <laughs> yeah. She takes them into this new world, acquaints them with everyone, settles them into their new home, and then goes back to the real world to protect the book, since their parents will inevitably be looking for them. And also, we really don't know what happens if an item that's been skidooed into gets damaged or destroyed. For all we know, it could be like the chalk drawing in Mary Poppins. Once the drawing dissipates, the world follows. This is why she visits them so sparingly and isn't in many photos, only drawings. Because she only rarely risks being away from the book and can't protect it from the inside. Now, Steve and Joe are happy in storybook world while their parents continue to exist in the live action world, forever wondering where they went while Grandma keeps them safe. Eventually, she notices Steve's intense desire to have a puppy. And knowing his love of mysteries, she creates another special book with a special puppy who not only has mysteries to eventually uncover, but who will also make new mysteries for him to solve every day. She even decides to design the currency of this world to reflect his new blue friend, as a way to make learning about money more enticing and relatable. But then, what about the other live-action people seen in this world across the series? Where'd they come from? Well, who's to say that Steve and Joe are the only ones that Grandma helped? Now that she has this world she's created, a world that can continuously expand and evolve, she could help other people who are having a rough go of it in the real world by offering them a much simpler life. This would both help people in need while also allowing Steve and Joe to have more live-action human interaction. Now this fully formed world can evolve and thrive with both storybook world and live-action people alike. And perhaps this is why in Blue's Clues New, the letters tend to show children in sets that more closely resemble the style of Storybook World. Because these are the next generation of those live-action residents that entered this world years ago, now growing up in this world just like Steve and Joe did. 
But of course, the live action world is still always there to explore. And it seems like Steve and Joe have even taken some steps towards re-entering their original world, as they're seen in Blue's Big City Adventure having locations for their businesses in New York City. And who knows, maybe there's a reason they both picked this city specifically. Maybe it's where they originally grew up. And now that they're back here, they could always attempt to reconnect with their parents, give them a chance to make amends, and tell them about all the crazy magical adventures and friends they've made in the time they've been away. But hey, that's just a theory. A clue theory. And cut. Hello. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and I really hope you enjoyed the theory. I did my very best to get as close as I could to the style of writing and editing in the typical film theory episode, and I think I was at least moderately successful in that. And if you weren't jazzed about the theory, then remember it is just a theory, well, clue theory, just my way of interpreting the events and lore of the show, and if you don't agree, that's totally okay. And now onto you, Matt Pat, who I'm hoping magically sees this video. I just want to say thank you so, so much for all the years of theories and all the inspiration you've given me from being your awesome self through your content. I'd also like to extend this sentiment over to the rest of the crew that have made all the theorist channels possible over the years, as well as the new hosts that have just recently taken over. As sad as I am to see you stepping down, Matt, I am so excited to see what you're going to go on to do. And honestly, from what I've been seeing so far since you've retired, the channels are in really good hands. Speaking of your retirement real quick, may I just say, it's not enough that you had to go and say Game Theory is Blue's Clues, but also your exit had to perfectly mirror Steve's exit from Blue's Clues? Like, I, offensive. How dare you? Were you targeting me specifically? Because it worked. I cried. Good job. Ugh. <laughs> Rude. Alright, last thing before I wrap up this wrap up. Uh, on the topic of if I will make more Clue Theory episodes, the answer is... it depends. Thing is, as much as I've had fun making this video, and as much as I would love to continue making videos in the style, at least for Clue Theory specifically, it's not my style and branding. I don't own it. In fact, the only reason I can get away with using it here is because this video is an homage, first and foremost. Things would be a bit different if I tried to make this a full series on its own with no permission, because then it's kind of, well, perpetual copying. Now that being said, if for some odd reason MatPat and or Team Theorist approved of me making these videos in this style, at least for this specific series, then I'd be happy to make more. Honestly, I already have a couple of extra theories that I could potentially turn into episodes, but only, and I do mean only, if I was given the proper permission and blessings from the actual crew. I don't want to steal, I want everything to be on the up and up, so if they say for some odd reason that I could continue doing this in this style, under this name, with this logo, then sure. But otherwise, this is going to be the only episode of Clue Theory. And honestly, worst comes to worst, I might consider changing up the style of branding for the series, the name, the everything about it, in order to get more Blue's Clues theories out, because I kinda... I kind of really want to talk more about Blue's Clues theories. I, I kind of got a high from this video that I might need to continue on a little bit, but maybe. I'm not, I'm not making any promises, but maybe. Alright, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.